Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Um, this time uh, I'm looking at a Commodore 1351 mouse. So this is uh, one of the mice with the Commodore 64. Um, you know, it's a proportional, um, one of these proportional ones, so you know, depending on how much you move it, depends on how much it moves on the screen. Um, if you hold the right button down on this particular mouse, you get into um, a joystick emulation mode. So actually I'm going to test this on the Amiga, just because I've not got a C64 set up just at the moment, but I will do that later when I come to test it properly. Um, but the, the, this is report does not work in, in this direction. Um, you know, if you move it from side to side, the um, optical part there, you know, this um, inside that what I'm expecting is probably going to be um, like a, a transmitter, you know, an IR diode and uh, an IR transistor or diode on the other side to, you know, indicate whether the signals, the laser, not laser, but infrared beam has been received through the, the wheel, you know, the little slits in the wheel there. And I think it's, you know, it's the, that direction that's the problem. Up and down, you can move, you know, that works okay. So I'll test it out on the Amiga now um, and see what's what. Um, I'll probably just take it to bits actually before I do that and then we'll give it a test. So interesting construction there. There's this um, bit here with these two um, buttons. You know, it's like I said, a PCB um, soldered on by three wires, um, and then it's just floating. You know, on a couple of plastic supports, as you can see. So I'll get those screws out um, and try and get the board out. So we can look at the board, and particularly the. Uh, I'm not sure where it is. Probably on this side here, the sensor. Maybe there's some dirt or dust or something in there. That'd be real nice if it was. That was the case. So I just want to show you here, if you're using a camcorder like this, I don't know if you can just about see, uh, I'll try and get the finger on shot, just down there, can you see that little pink, uh, I'll try and get the camera at a better angle, it looks a little bit pink, um, and it's the same on that one over there, if I just move it around a bit, can you see it's a little bit pink, we're actually capturing the uh, infrared there on that direction, on this one here, you should be able to tell quite clearly there, in fact both of them, can you see, that one's infrared, that one's infrared, so it looks like it's the receiver or the chip, by the looks of things, um, because we've got infrared being emitted from both of the uh, you know um, diode, uh, you know output diode parts. So it's, it must be the receiver. So I might have a receiver somewhere. I'll see if I've got a spare one. Um, other than that, it's going to be find a fault, another faulty mouse, and uh, maybe from an Amiga or an ST or something, and take um, the component out of that. So I've made a bit of progress here in unexpected uh, directions, as usual. Um, I'll show you in a minute a bit closer up, but there's a bunch of resistors here. Uh, two of them are used for each of the receiver pairs, you know, the two re receiver pairs. And one of the resistor values on one, the pair that's not, the, you know, that's not working, seemed to be the were completely different value. It was like twice the size of the others. Um, so that's a bit strange. Anyway, I swapped it out for 3.3k. Now there is, at the same time, I noticed this this mechanism here is not, it doesn't freewheel very well. Um, it's like it just needs a bit of uh, the black plastic wheel there. You can slide up and down the bar. It's quite hard to move it, but it's, it looks like it's been moved and it's stuck. Um, I think that's part of the problem. And if I show you, if I just start the game here, uh, sorry, I'm connected up to the Amiga at the moment. Um, and if I just start the game here, I'll show you. I've actually got some life out of it, so the receiver's not dead. The transmitter, as we've seen, is okay. Uh, see if we can go left and right. See it moving? And the ad hoc moving there to me says that it is a sync thing. It's the alignment of the laser, you know, the laser, the infrared beam through the holes there. It's not quite right. I've seen this before. So there's nothing really wrong with this mouse. The up and down, obviously, free wheels really well. Uh, you can see you can jump on this particular game using that. I can't test down, but I'm pretty sure that that's working. Um, but yeah, all signs are that A, the resistor's part of the problem. I'm not sure why the hell it had the wrong size resistor, because I was getting nothing, so I changed that resistor. But now now it looks like, um, yeah, we've got a problem with the, 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 the wheel um, there. So I'm going to take that apart again, cl closely inspect it, maybe even get a bit of lubrication in there, see if I can get it freewheeling, but also clean up. There's two little slots, which I'll show you in a minute. I'm going to clean those up in case the beam is not shining through them properly. Yeah, so the first thing I'll show you here, and I don't know how well this is going to come out, you'll probably just be able to see the carpet, and you can see my finger if I move my fingers underneath. Um, we've got two little thin slots here. Um, now, I've just widened these a little bit. I might just widen them a tiny, tiny bit further, um, just to make sure the beam is getting through, because they were quite narrow. One of them, in particular, was quite restricted there. Um, the gap was very small indeed. Um, so I'm wondering if that's got something to do with it. Quite possible. 
So the other thing I'll show you is the resistors. Um, there are five resistors here, four of them, I think it's R6 through R9, are used by the receiver sides. So you can see I've just temporarily written on the board here with some permanent marker, just for ease of access really. I can wipe these off with a bit of ice after. Um, on the receiver side, so R6 and R7 on the one that's not working um, and R8 and R9 on the ones that do. Now if you look at R8 and R9, the bottom two here, we've got 3K3 um, and we've got... Um, have I got this down the right way? Yeah, which one did I swap now? I'm not sure. Yeah, I swapped R6, so I put a 3.3K, sorry I'm off camera as usual, um, I put a 3.3K in the R6 position here. Um, previously it had this here, let's have a look at this. What's that? I can't even see what it is. It's blue, grey, red, so 6.8K I think. Seems to be twice as big as the, the one that's in the same position for the other receiver. So, that's a bit weird. Maybe it does need to be that size. I can't think why it would be completely different because it's going to um, separate pins on the chip here. Um, unless one of the axes is more sens um, sensitive than the other. Maybe that's something to do with it. I can always swap it back, but anyway, um, that's the situation at the moment. I've got 3.3k in there, the same as, you know, so th these both work the same way. They've got the same pairs of resistors in there, I think. Yes, they have. Um, so anyway, I'll clean this, uh, you know, I'll clean the wheel up a bit, widen these a little bit, inspect this area around here, maybe get a bit of lubrication on the rail, um, and just yeah, I might even compare the height of these because that's mega critical as well. Um, you know, if, if if one of these sits lower than the other one, just by you know a quarter of a millimeter, you could have a problem. Now, if they've been, they've been reheated, these I'm just wondering if someone's reheated them at some point, um, and one's just moved position slightly. Um, I did test connectivity on the cable, ruled that out. You know, I tested all connected all every connection there from this board. Um, through to the D connector there, no issue. So the issue does, you know, relate to the way that the beam is not going, to, it's not being disrupted in the exact correct sequence by this. So something else I think I'm going to do here, and this might be the cause of this. Can you see here? Can you see this? The the the, the, the diode side, the output diode, the emitter. Um, it's coming up towards this point here and down towards here. It's like a slant, you know, if you imagine that's that's like, you know, I'll try and put it straight on. If that's straight, it's like that, just ever so slightly. You can tell, um, well, hopefully you can tell. Uh, so if I can get a focus, if you look at this one here, you know, that those are like dead in, those are totally in line. This one here is in line with those two, but this one's out by, I don't know, one, or two, one degree or two degrees. Um, so it's, you know it's not going to be pointing straight at this receiver. Uh, I'm just going to twist it just very carefully with a pair of uh, fine nose pliers. Well, you wouldn't believe how difficult that was. It was a case of widening those two holes. Um, I did spend a bit of time readjusting the position of this um, the emitter there, the emitter diode, you know, the uh, IR emitter. Um, so it's, it's almost straight. I had to melt the uh, plastic housing there because I don't know it's warped or, or something but I just touched it with the soldering iron in order that I could then um, smooth it down and then put the component back in and pretty much straighten it. It still wasn't quite right, it was a lot better and then it was just a case of revisiting the two slits in the piece of plastic that I showed earlier. Um, and if I show you on the screen now, uh, I'll do this, hang on, try and do this at the same time. I shouldn't be doing this while it's exposed. If I move right as you can see we go right uh, and if we move left we go left occasionally you can just flip back a bit hang on i think that's just the position of the wheel and it's partly because it's free rotating back again after it's after i've let go right i've repositioned the tripod just to try and show you uh if we go that way left 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 right 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 you can see that's working fine occasionally it'll flip left just a little bit so I'm not sure it's completely perfect. Um, I might just tinker with it a little bit. Yeah, you can see it went both both ways then. So you can see it working here in emulation mode. Uh, I'll just show you. Got the mouse up here. Um, so it works quite well. You know, the left and right is working fine now. No issues there at all. 
managed to play this quite successfully. I'm going to go with Operation Thunderbolt now actually just to see what that plays like. There we go, you can see it working with Operation Thunderbolt now. This is you in the Commodore mouse mode um, and use the right button to fire. It confused me a bit to start with because I was using the left button. But yeah, it's working fine, you know, the proportional bit is working as well. You can zoom quite quickly from one side to the other. Although I'm not doing very well here. Hold the fire button down and move it around from left to right. You can see it moves fine. There's no jerking, there's no uh, you know reverse direction change or anything like that. It's spot on. As you can see, it's working operation wolf here. I'm just using this in emulation mode. Anyway, I thought you'd find that interesting. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.